Financials getting hit the hardest today, so we brought in a special guest for the hour. Fred Cannon is with us. He's director of research and chief equity strategist at Keith Briette and Woods, an investment bank that focuses on the financials. So he's always watching the financials. Uh, first of all, thanks for joining us for the hour. Really appreciate it on this Friday before <laughs> Labor Day weekend. Surely you're in trouble at home. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, Matt. Let's, Great to be here. Let's talk about uh, Bank America. Such an interesting story because. After we spend all this money to bail the banks out and the Fed and the, and, and the government do so much to prop them up, in fact, Bank America just went over to the Fed to explain their contingency plan. Now we sock them in the face with a possible multi-billion dollar lawsuit. What's going on? Well, the other thing Bank of America did remember in, during the crisis was they bought Countrywide, which also, at the end of the day, looking back, saved the government a lot of money, but it's costing the shareholders a lot right now. And those continued lawsuits about Not the mortgage Countrywide, business, Merrill as well, right? Merrill, Merrill. They were too. one of the saviors. And, and Merrill did a lot of that packaging of the mortgage securities that they're talking about today as being a concern. So absolutely. Bank Bank of America seems to not be able to, you know, win for uh, for anything right now. So, what do you think about the suit? I mean, so far we've only heard uh, that it's a possibility. We don't see an actual lawsuit coming. The timing seems horrible, but I guess there's a statute of limitations issue here. Right. They seem to have to get this lawsuit in for some legal reason by Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday. So, I think they're they're going to file. It looks like a pretty good story, and at least from the press reports, it looks like it could be fairly damning. It's really going after lending who knowingly made those low-doc, no-doc loans in the back of their mind, knowing there wasn't any income to support them. You so, say that with kind of a smirk. I, I'm, I'm sensing because that you know they did that. I mean, you were there. You've been covering this industry for 30 years or involved in this industry for 30 years. So. Exactly, Matt. If you look back at that time period, I was covering Countrywide and Washington Mutual during that 06-07 time period. And when you ask those companies about those low-doc loans and did the, did the folks really have the income to support it, you knew that basically they were looking the other way most of the time. We're going to continue to talk about this a little bit later. Also, I'm going to get some picks. So you and I will delve further into financials, but I don't want to uh, miss the opportunity to talk about the jobs number. Right. A big round number we got, a zero, right? And a lot of the traders down here are thinking the real number is even worse when you when you dig deeper into the, the, the data. What do you think about this jobs number? Well, there wasn't anything good in it. The, uh, the, the household survey wasn't quite as bad, so there was a little glimmer of hope, but the uh, payroll survey was clearly bad. The, hours worked was down too, so you kind of got a double whammy on that. So there wasn't anything good. The real concern here was, when you look back, we did have some momentum in the economy in July, but that debt ceiling debate, the downgrade, and this volatility in the market seems to really have zapped the economy, and that's what people were looking for. We were looking for what happened in August, and today's number said it wasn't good. Uh, and actually, let me pick up on that, Fred, because, you know, when you're talking about uh, the job losses and the fact that you're watching the financial sector in particular, everybody is saying that we are on the cusp of perhaps seeing some massive layoffs on Wall Street. Uh, what could tip us over the edge on that? Well, the tough thing for Wall Street and for many financials is, is the volatility in the market and the yield curve. This yield curve coming down below 2 percent, while it may be something the Fed wants, it may be good for the economy generally, it's bad for banks. It's going to put pressure on earnings, and that means the only place that banks can really try and retain profitability is by cutting staff. Let me ask you a question on, on the banks, because so many people have been talking about uh, the pros and cons of the banks. Are they helping? Are they hurting? And the big question is, do they actually lend? The conspiracy theorists that email me all day say they're not lending anywhere, anything to anyone. Meanwhile, Jamie Dimon uh, and Brian Moynihan will tell you they are lending, and they show you stats that show that it's growing. Oh, they're lending. The problem is about who are they lending to? The good thing is, if you're qualified for a loan today, the competition from the banks is stiff. I was just out in California, and the small bankers are saying they can't get the loans they want because Wells Fargo's coming in there with rates that they can't match. So for qualified borrowers, they're there. The challenge is, is that for many good reasons, the standard by which people will lend today is much higher. So people that don't meet that standard are not there. But really, more importantly, it's that a lot of borrowers just don't want to borrow in this uncertainty and this volatility in this market.